guys, here we are. A little different environment. We're in my house. This is where I built the engine. This is where it stayed since I built it last winter. So this is where I got to pull the head off. We're going to put the ARP head studs in it, throw it back together. So uh, nothing really special. I'll probably slow it down and walk you through a little bit of the reassembly because it's a little more important when you're putting it back together than you are when you're tearing it down. But uh, for now, jump to the time lapse. Here we go. Wow, I feel like somebody's watching me. But as you can see, like timing marks, sometimes the colored links will jump around. As you spin it over, because I've spun it over since I built it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with a paint pen, put a dot on the gear, a dot on the link dot on a gear, dot on a link. Bottom chain's not going to move, so I just have to worry about keeping the top chain stuff in sync or in time. So when I go to put everything back together, between those and this guy right here, I'll know that my cams are back in place. And another easy telltale sign is that usually the cam lobes are pretty close to being 9 and 6 o'clock. They should both be like slightly up from being exactly 9 and 6 with the same plane as like the head. So as long as um excuse me, as long as both lobes are just a little bit up, you should be okay. Uh, I think I just stopped where I started to uh, untorque the head, and I'm doing an eighth of a turn increments because I don't want the head to warp. If you pull like one bolt all the way loose, you got all the bolts around that corner clamped down, and that one's trying to come up just because the pressure of the gasket. So. Eighth of a turn, loose, did two laps, there's not a whole lot of pressure on it anymore. But now I'm going to start doing them one at a time, just snugging them up so the head doesn't have any chance to really move or disturb the way the gasket's clamped on it. So there's a close-up shot. As you can see, not a whole lot going on. Still got the oil in the uh, assembly lube, assembly grease from when I built it. All right, we'll pull out uh, some of the bolts and start putting some of the studs in. Sometimes it's nice just sitting in your living room while you're building an engine. Let's see what we got for the goods. Hopefully we don't need to warranty these. Instructions, which I will follow to the T. Sticker, high horsepower. Assembly lube. There we are. Studs, bolts, washers. I'll read the directions and uh, I'm guessing they're going to say probably throw them in finger tight. And then we'll start putting everything back together. Just torque the head and start putting everything back.
Uh, you've seen it from there. Cams are in, timing marks lined up, chain on, tensioner on, front cover on. Uh, the top bolts are 4.6 to 7.2 foot pounds. The camshaft sprocket bolts are 125 to 130 foot pounds. The tensioner bolts are 4.6 to 5.5 foot pounds. Uh, front bolts I haven't done yet. I'm pretty sure they're 12 to 16 foot pounds. And I'm going to pop the distributor in. So with the Engine set at top dead center, compression stroke, cylinder number one, nose to low, straight out pretty much. Pop your distributor in with the uh, cap on, and I hope there's enough light to see this. This one, this cap's numbered, I'm not sure if they all are, but this one is at least. You can see with it on there, there's a number one right there, so this is post one. So what I want is to get the with the cap on, you can see the post is pretty much lined up with this rope right here. So that means I need to have the rotor clocked right there on number one and pop it in. Now when you pop it in, because you got a, a helical cut, you're going to have to have it twisted one way and as you slide it in, it's going to move. So just make sure you get it lined up with about where this rib is. And uh, once you have it snapped in, just make sure everything's still top dead center and pop the cap on. Make sure you're pointed at uh, post number one for the spark plugs. Distributor and the other engine for that ECU is a 26 tooth wheel. It's the AEM or the Mega Squirt wheel. It's not the factory wheel, it's like in this thing, so I need to swap the distributors. Try to keep stuff out of it. But uh, I pulled the other distributor, I'm not going to put it on. I could, it's just really dirty. I wasn't going to put it on because it's not going to be in there on there for very long. It's just going to be on there for a little bit because I'm going to switch back to the factory crank trigger wheel because it's going to have a different computer on it that can read the 360 degree slot wheel. But I just can't bring myself to do it. It's dirty. It sticks out like a sore thumb. So I'm going to take that to work and clean it up tomorrow before I put it on there. But uh, got 80% of it done tonight in a three hour window. So not too bad. Of course, it's a little easier when it's sitting here versus being on the car, but still, it's you know it's something you could do in a half day at home in your garage, you know, and not be in too much of a rush. So everything's torqued up. We'll let the uh, silicone sit a little bit. It's supposed to give about an hour to set up, and I'll come in and just torque the front cover bolts. And then uh, tomorrow, all we got to do is pop the distributor in, uh, torque those two bolts, and then just. Uh, put the valve cover gas back on, a little silicone in the front and rear cam seals, and that's it. Alright guys, here we are. Uh, might be a continuation of the last video. If not, we're going to finish up the engine today. Uh, last time we finished up all the headsets, everything else. Still got to put the distributor in and time it. And put the PVC can, which goes right in there if you can see it. Because I didn't want to regret this later. Because I... When I filed the rings, I made them a little bit on the loose side, so hopefully they don't touch. And I had a dash 6 on this guy, and I bumped it up to a 12. So hopefully she should breathe, not have any issues with building up any crank case, crank case, crank case pressure. There we go. And then swap them to the old distributor, or it's got the, uh, the Mega Squirt crank trigger wheel in it. And this thing was just really dirty, so I took it to work, cleaned it up, and shot it with some paint. So if this happens to stay on there for a month or so before I get the new computer set up on it, you know, it won't look really, really bad. So, uh, nothing special. On to the time lapse and button up a few things, and uh, we'll see you in a few seconds. Uh, so, the PCB tank's back on. Obviously, the valve cover's on. Distributor's in. So, uh, I think you saw me down there struggling. The top bolt in here, it's hard to get a direct shot at. I think I started to cross thread it a little bit when I was getting it in there. So I went and switched it. First I had to get a tap. Run a tap through just to clean it up a little bit in case I did cause any damage. And then uh, I got me a bolt that has a, uh, a Phillips head, you know, cross into the head of the bolt. 
this way I can get in there with a screwdriver and let the bolt kind of find its home versus using the socket where it's kind of directing it somewhat and it might be off track. So, if you got all that figured out, that's all good. Uh, that's it for the motor. I might uh, clean up a frame rail, bolt my frame rail on before it goes in the car. But other than that, this thing is pretty much ready to get dropped in this weekend. Uh, looking down here, I'm glad I got a decent amount of room. I feel like to get a fitting and hose run through here. If anything, if I can go back in time, I might angle this up a tiny bit just so it's pointing away from the oil filter housing. But other than that, she's looking pretty good. Coming towards the end, she's almost done.